Together, the bishops have studied the scriptures, we have paid attention to the church tradition, and we have listened to wider society, as well as the voices of our sister churches in the Anglican Communion and our ecumenical partners. Above all, we have sought the wisdom of the Holy Spirit in prayer and worship. The differences uh, within the Church of England are also present among the bishops of the Church of England. Engaging with living in love and faith pro uh, process has enabled us to become more open and honest with each other. That has been an important part of the process, which means, uh, what, and, and I think has given us a greater understanding of what it means uh, to be living together as members of the body of Christ. Being honest has not erased our disagreements, but it has deepened our relationship and our desire to continue to work with one another, seeking the deeper, deeper unity for the church for which Christ prayed for. Some clear developments have emerged from our discussions that, in fact, are a series of firsts for the Church of England. In an open letter, we together apologise for the pain, hostility, exclusion and rejection that LGBTQI people have experienced within the Church. We realise that this behaviour has not reflected the universal love of God for all people. We know that we need to change. And Archbishop Stephen will speak more on this shortly. In our letter, uh, because we, will, we write a letter to the church, we express our joyful affirmation and celebration of LGBTQI people in our church communities. And we have begun to produce a suite of prayers. These uh, prayers are known as prayers of love and faith. They mean that same-sex couples uh, who are faithful and seek a lifelong relationship will be able to come into churches in the Church of England for prayers of dedication, thanksgiving and of God's blessing uh, after, for example, uh, coming to a significant point of their relationship or entering a civil partnership or marriage. For the first time, the church, uh, churches within the Church of England uh, will be able to do this. This is a real first. Up until now, same-sex couples have had no way of publicly expressing their desire to put God at the centre of their relationship and commitment to one another in a Church of England church. One of the aims of the Living in Love and Faith project was to enable the church to better live out its calling in the context of a 21st century understanding of being human and being sexual. Both the church and wider society are faced with new challenges that concern human identity and relationships. These include, for example, our need to reflect on what it means to be embodied human beings in an increasingly virtual world and in a world where the concept of gender, for example, has become fluid. We also live in a society with a growing number of single people, both young and old. Human beings are created to be in relationship. Relationships are the stuff of everyday human life and flourishing. So how do we express and enact genuine welcome and acceptance that enables the flourishing of the diversity of people and relationships that form the everyday lives of people in our communities? That is what the church is called to. So how do we speak into this, the wisdom of Christian understanding and of God's good will to all people? These are some of the areas that bishops agree the church needs to attend to.